my bold prediction for 2023, a kind who finally gets from behind that desk and all that paperwork and does something. Happy New Year to y'all. It is 2023. Today, we're going to talk about One Piece in 2023 and what what to expect. Oda set the tone last year. I went back and looked at the chapters around the end of the year last year. It was around Sanji versus Queen Zora versus King. So that gives you an idea of everything that happened throughout the year that's led up to this point, right? Like last year was a special year. We got a new gear. We finally saw Green Bull. We got a Shanks movie. The year before that, what do you say was better? Introduction to Rooftop, the raid. I would say this, for the past couple years, the conversation has revolved around Wano. Okay, just exclusively Wano. Towards the end of last year, probably the middle of it, once we started getting into the post Wano, Green Bull showing up, and guys, you, you can be honest here. Okay, we can be honest here. You can, you can keep it honest with me, your boy. Wano went to a different level after Green Bull showed up. Okay, like after we saw an admiral was pulling up to Wano, as great as Luffy versus Kaido was in the conclusion, some would agree, some would disagree. It went up to another level because you kind of felt the stakes a little bit. And so we're coming off a fantastic year, boys and girls. But today, we're going to talk about One Piece in 2023 and what we can expect. Some of my favorite things, of course, is going to revolve around Garp and Blackbeard. They're going to revolve around, of course, Shanks. And then we're going to do some special speculative deep diving <sighs> we love that right that's just that's what that's what we're here for first thing the most obvious thing that everyone's talking about and i plan to get deeper into just how a fight with garp and blackbeard would go because i think people are going a little far on both sides i think my take was well yeah garp is garp at the end of the day even though he's old he's still garp and blackbeard well he's the new guy he's the new king for all intents and purposes i know that's luffy but he's the guy that's going to go against luffy right and so he can't get defeated here i'm sorry the plot is more important than however you feel about power scaling <laughs> But I'm seeing people say, look at what Whitebeard did, right? Garp is at least or should be on that level because Whitebeard was sick. He should be able to defeat. Black <sighs> or even people saying Garp is immune to Blackbeard's devil fruit. I'm like, yo, when did this happen? Did something happen in One Piece where Garp just magically became immune to Blackbeard's devil fruit? Yes. Okay, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to go as deep into it because there's something coming in regards to Garp versus Blackbeard. But guys, Oda is, I think he's trolling us, okay? I think he's trolling us with Garp versus Blackbeard because it's not going to go the way we expect. All right, but let, let's think of the parts with why a Garp versus Blackbeard thing probably should not happen or is too soon to happen. But here's the, the most important thing that I want to just get across to you guys. Garp's goal is not to be Blackbeard because I think in all the videos about Garp and Blackbeard, and I've watched every single single one on the platform yeah <laughs> that's a lie i haven't watched any other than my own to be honest but here's the thing the only thing that i think is missing is the fact that garp doesn't have to be blackbeard because his goal isn't to be blackbeard his goal is to get kobe back <laughs> right that's that's literally the goal so for garp he can accomplish his goal without being blackbeard However, did Blackbeard get Kobe knowing he would lure out garp was that his mission at the end of the day we don't know people are gonna say well Blackbeard has run away from every top tier that we know of, right? For the most part, he's ran away. Shanks pull up, I'm out. I kind of pull up, I'm out. Really pull up, I'm out. Well, I'm not going to classify Marco necessarily. Is Marco a top tier? What, what is a top tier? What do you guys... Do we have to really define exactly what a top tier is? Because we say it all the time, but there's no real defined meaning for it. It's like, what's the cutoff? Sabo? But some people are like, well, Sabo's in strong. Hey, we're going down the rabbit hole. Let's get back on track. He's ran away from every top tier, but in every single instance, well, he ran away from CP0 as well. He's willing to go there at least, right? He's willing to engage, but then he runs away. Let's go through every scenario really quickly. Versus Shanks, he pulled up to Marine Ford, got the devil fruit and dipped. No need to fight Shanks. Cool. Kainu pulled up though. He had a ship that Blackbeard wanted. Blackbeard said, ah, not ready for that yet. Cool. Pulled up and exposed the revolutionary. CP0 came. They left. Cool. Pulled up to Amazon. Lily really pulled up. He left. Cool. You know the main difference is? Every single scenario, Blackbeard is at a spot in which that's not his home turf. He has no reason to defend whatever's there. The difference here is Garp is pulling up to him in Hachinosu. Now, personally, I'm of the mindset that Blackbeard won't even be there because he's currently engaging with Law. Law should probably maybe be defeated by now. I'm not sure if Oda's going to show us the end of it, but I think Law versus Blackbeard is necessary for Blackbeard to win because Blackbeard needs the Poneglyphs to make it at least interesting between him and Luffy. 
that's the main reason I think why they're engaging. So Blackbeard might not even be there. That's why I think Aokiji could be there and I've had my whole video on it. It's right here if you want to go check it out. That's why I think this could be different if Garp does engage with Blackbeard because this is Blackbeard's spot. The Pirate Island's beehive is something that he pretty much domesticated and went there to take over for a reason. It's a bit different. Now let's talk about the Rocky Port incident. The incident that is shrouded in mystery even more than God Valley. The Rocky Port incident has been hyped up ever since Punk Hazard because we talk about Rocky Port incident, how Law became a warlord, all this different stuff, how Kobe got a goddamn nickname. The Rocky Port incident now they're including members of the Rocks Pirates, Blackbeard. What what the hell is a Rocky Port incident? So in 2023, I believe we're going to find out exactly what happened at the Rocky Port incident. Do I think some fraudulence went on in regards to Kobe? Yes, but do I think Kobe definitely did some things that opened the eyes of other people? Yes, but Oda is definitely teasing and hinting that the Rocky Port incident was a major deal. And so maybe that's where we see Kobe earn his stripes. And then we go back to where Kobe's actually being saved by Garp or whomever else. Next thing to expect in 2023, the conclusion of Blackbeard versus Law. I touched on it a bit earlier, but a lot of people, including myself, we, we assume that Law got defeated, right? And Blackbeard got away with Poneglyphs and Law is on the brink of death. He's, he's going to have to end up going to Elbaf and get healed, whatever, whatever. Would it be a plot twist if Law won or Law escaped with all the Poneglyphs? I, I'd be like, okay, well, wait, 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 what? That would be completely shocking, even though I think Law is holding his own against Blackbeard and his entire crew and to Law's crew's credit, they're doing a much, much, much better job than I expected. They're showing out, but there's a battle underwater. They're showing why they support Law as, as, as a captain. And he's basically the guy and they just support him. Okay, we can't fight everyone else 1v1, but we can support him so he can take out multiple people. It's pretty epic. It's like Boa Hancock. Like there's nobody else on Boa Hancock's crew that I think can really take out commanders necessarily. But if they support Hancock, Hancock with her busted powers she can take out commanders as we saw with katarina devon and what's the f's name vasco shot freaking creep so it's kind of like that here's the thing what i love about that and that's a quick tangent every crew isn't built the same we have the straw hat crew who's pretty much like shanks's crew they have white bears crews a family type structure who's deep. They go balls deep in regards to the quality of commanders. Rogers is somewhat similar to Luffy's and Shanks. Kid killer, for the most part, then there's a gap heat wire. Then you have Law, Law, then the others, Penguin, Sachi, freaking John Bum, John Bart. I like the fact that crews are made differently. Everybody doesn't have the same structure or have the right hand as a supernova or, or everyone doesn't have just a powerhouse, but nobody can really compete with the Straw Hat Pirates. They literally built different. They were amazing without Jinbei. Then you add Jinbei and I think Yamato's gonna join after that. It's, it's, it's unfair. Back to One Piece in 2023. Now, I think Egghead does go beyond 2023, honestly. Okay, here's the thing. We get about 30 or so chapters every year, 30 something chapters. Zoe is around 20 something chapters. I believe, right? So Egghead, if it's similar to Zoe, then it's going to end probably by summertime. Could it go beyond that? My thing is that Egghead probably has some underlying things we got to figure out, but Oda's not going to stretch out Luffy versus the Admirals and Marines or CP0 that long. So Egghead might have like five to 10 chapters left. And if that's the case, then we get Elbaf the second half of the year. So in 2023, we're going to get a resolution with Law versus Blackbeard, I think. We get some more Garp stuff. We get the Rocky Port incident. We get the resolution of Luffy versus Kizaru probably some more lore with devil fruits because oda did say and confirm that vegapunk will let us know about devil fruits that's just the beginning vegapunk's theory because i think when it's coming from the authority you gotta believe him because well even though it's put in theory form this is oda speaking through vegapunk now going forward let's say we get to elbaf we should get some saul stuff right some saul and robin stuff some elbaf lore and you know who's the guy that we associate the most with elbaf shanks uh, i do think we get some more shank stuff in 2023 it's been building even shanks pulling up to promote his movie at the end of wano it is time for us to see exactly what shanks is about his history i have a a, a, a crack theory that oda is going to give us some shanks backstory shanks is upbringing for the most part in a mini flashback once we get to shanks and albath i think we need some more about shanks to understand why he moves the way he moves what roger said to him is important as well because he was crying for whatever reason and his purpose because now he's willing to make a move to get the one piece why were you waiting the entire time of course you can assume it was for luffy but i do think we get some shanks in 2023 and 
El Baf in 2023. Now, Oda did say, hey, guys, One Piece is not going to end the way or the time period in which I made it seem, meaning I'm adding more shit. Don't be alarmed. One Piece is going to go on much longer. So expect a bunch of things to be added. And again, we cannot ignore the Shonen Jump or the Jump Festa thing. However, I've noticed for Jump Festa, a lot of things Oda talks about, they normally happen either towards the end of the year or literally the year after he mentions it. So the Shanks stuff, he talked about Shanks not in the previous year's Jump Festa, but the year before that, right? He said the man with the red hair will make his move. The man with the red hair made his move in 2022, not 2021 as we expected. I made a video going into 2021 about Oda saying Shanks or man with the red hair make his move. People were trolling me because Oda said that and people were like, well, it could be Kid, we're in Wano, right? Or it could be Rockstar. Shanks made his move in 2022. So whatever Oda talks about, it may not materialize until the end of 2023. So that man fighting that man is when, in my opinion, my prediction is that Aokiji and Garp, they're the ones who actually have to fight because of all the history behind it and how mind blowing it would be. We make predictions all the time. Like I predict so many things. I get so many things wrong and that's fine because One Piece is meant to be unpredictable and I love when I'm wrong. Bro, predicting Garp versus Aokiji, considering how much Aokiji Aokiji looks up to Garp, Garp saving Aokiji's life and just the good guy we presume Aokiji to be. We would not expect that at all. With predictions, typically I go outside the box and go against what my normal thinking is because I didn't expect a lot to be fighting against a Blackbeard. You're like, what the heck? It's just so crazy and Oda is always trying to just blow our minds and blow it out of the water our expectations. So I go against the grain sometimes. So it may sound or feel stupid, but I think that's the beauty of it. Also, I never attach myself to something and think this absolutely has to happen for something to be good. No, I've had thoughts in my mind before about how something or what should make something good and it went a complete opposite way and it was equally as good if not better. I would never act like I'm an authority on everything One Piece and how One Piece should go and the structure and the themes. No, you know I'm an authority on? Fun, okay, and having a good time. And as long as One Piece is giving me a good time, then I'm fine. Anyway, guys, give me your thoughts, okay? I just wanted to empty my brain for a bit as far as things I've been thinking about. I mean, I've been thinking about the Admirals and the Yonko and just the Supernova when we're going to see a Rouge again. The expectation for Kizaru because it's, it's been all over the place. And something I realize again, is I do enjoy power scaling, but it's so vast, the power scaling landscape. People are so just freaking everywhere when you talk about power scaling because people view the story differently. Oda sets things up and shows things in such a, a wide lens that you could have 10 different people that would have the same person in 10 different spots on a top 30 list. And that's the beauty of it. Now, when it gets toxic is when people disagree with another's opinion and then starts to insult. And, you know, that's when it goes too far. And that's when I got to just disconnect. It's supposed to be fun. Anyway, One Piece in 2023 is going to be absurd bold prediction i need you guys bold prediction okay what's your bold prediction for 2023 i would say it here and i'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video even though i'm saying it last so you're gonna see this first and then you're gonna see this part at the end of the video be like oh shit like he said it because you know when you're making a video time doesn't matter because you can put things in different spots i do it all the time in my videos but you guys probably you don't <laughs> You don't notice. But anyway, my bold prediction for 2023, I kind of finally gets from behind that desk and all that paperwork and does something. What it is, I don't know, but he's going to leave that desk in 2023. That's my bold prediction, guys. What is yours? Let's see them later. If you're interested in more Garb versus Blackbeard and a more specific topic video, click here.